Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, this video is for quick revision uh, of electrical circuits for NSEP exam. I have already created separate videos for uh, each and every topic. So I am assuming that you have already watched those videos. But from the exam point of view, uh, you should make list of some formulae that is required for solving the numericals as well as you should uh, brush up the things just well before the exam. So I'm trying to uh, elaborate such things. That means I have already made a list of formulae which are required for solving the numericals as well as I will tell you a few important tips to memorize the important concepts related to this subject. Okay, so uh, unit number three is two port network parameters. You should know the defining equation of each and every parameter. It is written sequence wise. That is first set is for Z parameter. Second set is for Y parameter. Third is for H parameter. And fourth is for transmission. That is A, B, C, D parameter. Do remember there are two names for this. One is transmission parameter. Another is A, B, C, D parameters. So I have already created the video uh, how to generate the equations like parameters of each and every uh, thing. So I'm not going to repeat such things. Only the thing is that how to write the note, how to write the terms related to each and every notation. For example, if you are calculating Z11, keep in mind the input terminals are denoted by 1, 1 dash, output terminals are denoted by 2, 2 dash. If notation is Z, Z stands for impedance. It is 1, 1. So it is input impedance. Before that, one more thing. While generating the uh, condition, like, like if you are deriving the parameter, Z parameters, let us say, then you need to mention certain condition. So how to memorize those conditions? If you are making voltage zero, write it as a short circuit. If you are making current zero, write it as an open circuit. For example, while calculating Z11, you are supposed to make I2 zero. I2 is current, rather output current, whatever input or output is immaterial. Since you are making current zero, you will be writing like this, open circuit output port because I'm making I2 zero. Likewise, in case of this parameter, suppose I'm calculating by two one and I'm making V1 zero. V1 is what? V1 is driving point or input voltage. You are making voltage zero. So it is short circuit. So you'll be writing condition like this input port short circuit. So this is the way how to memorize uh, such simple things. Now, uh, this, this is about the derivations. But while solving the numericals for Z parameters, calculation of Z parameters, Always and always prefer KVL, that is Kirchhoff's voltage law. You will be getting, uh, usually you will be getting three loops. So keep in mind, these are the defining equations in which we have the notations I1 and I2. If applying KVL, if you are getting one extra notation, let us say I3, then from that equation, generate the equation of I3 in terms of I1 and I2, and then further simplify it and compare with the available standard equation. Likewise, for the calculation of Y parameter, use KCL, that is Kirchhoff's current law or node analysis. Same way, whatever I said, uh, like the Z parameters, if you are getting some extra parameter, try to convert it in terms of I1, V1 and V2, and then compare it with the available equations. Now, one important part, uh, if the given network is a T network, this is having the uh, shape of English letter T, so it is a T network, then you don't have to do any calculations, right? Like, like you don't have to use KVL or KCL, direct formula are available. What are those formulae? Let us brush up it. Uh, in case of T parameters, this is the T network, you can directly write answers of Z parameters. So Z11 is, is equals to <coughs> addition of impedance, in this case resistance where current I1 flows, current I1 is flowing like this. So addition of resistance means this becomes R1 plus R3 through, through which I1 flows. Then Z22 is addition of resistance or impedance where current I2 flows, I2 is flowing like this. So it is R2 plus R3 and Z12 is equals to Z21. That means Z12 and Z2 are R same, which is equals to common resistance where I1 and I2 flows. So in this case, it is R3. Likewise, you can directly write the answers if given network is a T network. So simple trick is, 
if possible try to convert network in terms of t network by taking series and parallel connections but keep in mind if there is a, a, a let us say dependent source then you cannot convert it into a t type of network you have to use a kvl now next if you have a pi parameter or pi network then in that case again there are rules but for pi parameter pi network is like this so for pi network you have to directly calculate y parameters remember it like this t means z parameter pi means y parameter what are those rules i have marked the nodes this is input node 1 this is input node 2 so formula are y11 is equals to sum of admittance connected to node 1 i am repeating admittance it is not impedance or resistance admittance is reciprocal of impedance so in this case it becomes 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 because as shown in this figure r1 and r2 are connected to node 1 so i want to express it in terms of admittance rule is take summation of admittance so 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 then y22 is sum of admittance connected to node 2 so again it is 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 now y12 is equals to y21 is negative of common admittance common admittance connected between node 1 and 2 common admittance is 1 by r2 and take negative of that so it becomes minus 1 by r2 one more important thing related to this z and y parameters if uh, while solving numericals you are getting the condition like z11 is equals to z22 the network is said to be symmetrical don't forget to mention this thing while attempting uh, such questions and if you are getting uh, in the answer z12 is equals to z21 then the network is said to be reciprocal so same is applicable for y parameters and other parameters too so do remember these two words symmetric and reciprocal this is a, these are the shortcut methods to calculate z parameters and y parameters what if uh, if the numerical is related to h parameter and uh, t parameter i will tell separate things for this now if you want to attempt numericals related to h parameters or abcd pattern parameters the another technique is Calculate Z parameters only using KVL or if it is T network directly you can write the answers of Z parameters. There are formulae to convert to obtain H parameters if you have the values of Z parameters. No doubt H parameters can be this is this is the case in which I have expressed H parameters in terms of Z parameters. Similar formulae are available if you are well comfortable with KCL that means if you calculate Y parameters again you can generate H parameters. Presently, I have provided the formulae uh, that will give you calculation of H parameters in terms of Z parameters. Now, how to memorize this formulae? Very simple. See, I'm talking about uh, H parameters in terms of Z parameters. What do you have to do in the exam? You can calculate the Z parameters and using this formulae, you can convert it in terms of H parameters. So, how to memorize this formulae? Every denominator term contains Z22. Look at every formula. Every denominator is Z22. For numerator of H11, H1 is first parameter. We have Z11, Z22 minus Z12, Z21. Let us denote it by delta Z. So you can well simply write it as delta Z upon Z22. What I said, every denominator contains Z22 term. Then <clears throat> this is first H11. For H22, simply write it as 1 upon Z22. About H12, it is Z12. Numerator part is Z12. When you are writing H21, that means reverse of this, it is minus z21 see it is z12 upon z22 if you want to generate h21 it is reverse of this so minus sign is there and this is inverted so it is z21 upon z22 this is the way to memorize this formula next is abcd parameters in terms of z parameters again similar to the earlier case how to remember it every denominator term is z21 observe every denominator term it is z21 the uh, how to remember the values for a these are actually a b c d parameters for a numerator is z11 for d it is z22 because z22 is last uh, parameter of a b c d and a is the first parameter so z11 z22 for b it is delta z and for c it is 1 so 
likewise, if you calculate Z parameters, you can well obtain ABCD parameters from the Z parameters. Now, remaining part uh, from this uh, unit is the calculation of transfer impedance or calculation of driving point impedance or driving point admittance. See, you need to convert the given equation in terms of Laplace. So, there are simple tricks you have three basic components R, L, C. If you are converting the given things in terms of Laplace, then resistance remains as it is. So keep R as it is in place of L, you need to write S, L. S is the notation, L is the value of given inductors in terms of Henry's. Suppose it is given values 5 Henry's, so answer will be, if this 5 Henry's will be written as 5 into S or S into 5. Then capacitor C is expressed as 1 by S, C. Then from the given diagram, draw the new diagram by changing these notations and then perform the calculation like, 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 uh, uh, first take parallel combination, then it is a ladder network. So if first combination is parallel, second will be in series, third will be in parallel and so on. If first combination is series, second will be parallel, third is in series and so on. So this is the way how you can solve uh, how you can obtain the driving point impedance and driving point admittance. One important thing, if it is asked to calculate driving point admittance and you are calculating impedance, so just go on calculating impedance, final answer is, keep in mind the admittance is Y which is basically 1 by Z. So if you take reverse reciprocal of Z, answer will be directly for the value for the admittance. So these are the few uh, techniques, I mean few uh, formulae that you should memorize as far as derivations and numericals of the two port network parameters are concerned. The next part is rather next unit is DC machines which consists of two major parts, DC generators and DC motors. Uh, one more thing without, uh, I, uh, uh, before I forget, uh, dear students, uh, many students are asking uh, doubts in the comment session. I am trying to answer each and every doubt. Some uh, questions are unanswered. Reason is that I want to elaborate while uh, uh, delivering the lecture in the next video. For example, someone asked me uh, for 8 marks, uh, how much answer should I write? Rather it is 1 page, 2 page, 3 page and so on. Dear students, it's not like this. Your answer should be precise one. Precise in the sense, if suppose, it, if it is asked to explain the principle of working of DC generator, what is expected? You need to draw the proper neat diagram, labeled diagram rather, write the answers in a proper way like principle of working, then construction, then without fail, uh, uh, don't forget to write the functions of commutators. This is just one example. Likewise, you should uh, write the answer uh, in a straight wise or in a step wise fashion. But the diagrams are very very important wherever it is required draw the proper level to diagrams all right so if you have still any queries do ask me in the comment section i will try to reply each and every query so this consists of dc generator function of dc generator is to convert mechanical energy to electrical energy another part is dc motors which converts electrical energy to mechanical energy now the functions of commutators are most important in case of dc generator the first function of commutator is collect electrical energy from armature winding and transfer it to the electrical load. Do remember basic things. There are two major parts. So one is a stator as the name indicates. It is a static part, not changing, not rotating rather. And another is a rotating part, which is an armature. Armature consists of different windings. I am not drawing the diagram. You need to uh, learn, you need to memorize this diagram. So. The second, this is the first uh, function. Second function is, this is, I have drawn a sine wave. Remember it like this. This is a sine wave. It is bidirectional because it is having positive amplitude as well as negative amplitude. DC generator commutator converts bidirectional signal into unidirectional signal, but it is still varying. It is not constant. The signal is not like this. If it would have been like this, we would have said it is a DC signal. It's not like this. It is pulsating thing. It is unidirectional, not bidirectional, but it is not constant. So these are the two functions of commutators used in DC generator. About DC motors, 
you have to refer the same diagram I, in that video i have already explained this concept you have to just remember one diagram by making slight changes you will be in a position to draw the diagram for dc motors so function of dc motor is to convert electrical energy into the mechanical energy again you need to mention the functions of commutators in case of dc motor first function is transfer electrical energy from stationary supply to the rotating armature conductors and second uh, function of commutator is same convert unit uh, bidirectional uh, signal waveform into a unidirectional waveform now you need to also remember two types of windings are there uh, first is a lap winding another is a wave winding for lap winding do remember the formula number of parallel conductors a represents number of parallel conductors is equals to p p represents poles whereas for the wave winding the formula is a is equals to 2 this is fixed number now you should prepare emf equation this is a small derivation you should prepare emf equation of a dc generator the final formula is i am directly writing the final formula ez is equals to p pi zn upon 60a as far as losses are concerned how to remember uh, there are uh, many losses how to remember it in a simple uh, way uh, do remember these notations W stands for losses. First type of loss is WI I have written. It is iron loss. It is also known as the uh, magnetic loss. Second is WCU. It is a copper loss. CU stands for copper. What I said, do remember the basic notation W. Suffix I represents iron loss. Suffix CU represents copper loss. WB, these are the brush losses. So very simple. We are using commutators and brushes. So uh, brushes can cause some loss because brushes are used to collect the energy and then transfer it to the load. So that is brush loss. Then WM, this is again magnetic loss or motor loss uh, or mechanical loss. So remember it like this. We, since we have kind of, uh, covered a magnetic loss in WI, this WM, remember it like this, it is a mechanical loss. There can be mechanical friction between the different rotating parts as well as one more effect is there that is known as windage loss. What is the windage loss? Uh, there can be some air gaps between two parts so because of which losses are taking place so that is wm mechanical loss uh, then ws it is a stray loss again it is related to stray characteristics of the uh, rotating parts so this is about the losses now uh, this is the theoretical part while uh, solving the numericals i will provide you the list of formulae which will be helpful to solve the numericals for solving the numericals i have uh, made a list of uh, some important formulae First is back EMF. Uh, it is EB. Formula is P5 Zn upon 60A. This number 60 is fixed. Value of A is equals to P. If it is a lap winding, there are two types of windings. One is lap and another is wave winding. And if it is a wave winding, which will be mentioned in the question, then A will be 2. The notations of other, uh, meaning of other notations is P represents number of poles. Z represents number of conductors. All these values will be given in the question. Phi will be the flux. Keep in mind if the flux, general unit of flux is Weber's. If it is given in millivapors, you need to convert it into Weber's by multiplying that value by 10 raised to minus 3. Then N will be the speed of motor and this speed must be in RPM, revolutions per minute. So this is the formula to calculate back EMF. Uh, these are the formulae for uh, motors, DC motors. Then Next is armature current, it is IA, basic current is I since it is for armature, suffix is A, which is V minus EB upon RA, EB is back EMF, V is supply voltage, RA is armature resistance. Next is armature torque, See, basic notation of torque is T, since it is armature, it is TA, 0.159 P5ZIA upon A, meaning of each and every notation we already discussed in the previous formula. Next is copper loss. To calculate copper loss, this is the formula. Here, additional term is there, that is RSE. RSE is series resistance. There are two types of motors, uh, DC motors. One is series motor and another is shunt motor. If it is series motor, notation is RSC. If it is shunt motor, we would have used RSH. So, this, these values will be given in the numerical. Then input power is calculated using the formula P in is equals to V into IA. So this is the list of formula. Actually, numericals on uh, uh, DC motors are pretty simple. If, if you just remember this set of formulae, you will be in a position to solve any numerical. 
नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज इंडक्शन मोटर्स वी हैव अ थ्री फेज इंडक्शन मोटर आई हैव रिटर्न सम पॉइंट्स व्हिच व्हेयर आई हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो दैट इज प्रिंसिपल ऑफ ऑपरेशन डू प्रिपेयर दिस पॉइंट देन इफ यू गेट टाइम प्रिपेयर कंपैरिजन बिटवीन डीसी मोटर एंड इंडक्शन मोटर आल्सो आई हैव कवर्ड द डेरिवेशन ऑफ कंडीशन ऑफ मैक्सिमम टॉर्क इट इज रिलेटेड टू द इक्वेशन ऑफ टॉर्क व्हिच वी हैव डायरेक्टली रिटर्न एंड देन ऑब्टेन द uh derivation of condition of maximum torque this is pretty simple derivation just uh, take the derivative and equate the result to zero you will get this uh, condition then torque slip, slip characteristics also you need to prepare this torque slip characteristics there are two regions one is stable region another is unstable region i have already covered all these points in the previous video so i am just giving the overview then necessity of starter everyone knows that if you won't use the starter then there can be damage as far as the windings are concerned and so many losses are there so initially uh, the current is very huge to limit the current certain series resistors are used that is known as the starter there are two types of starters one is three point starter another is four point starter at least you should know what is the necessity of starter then this is the list of few formulae uh, if numericals are asked you should uh, prepare this list of formulae so if you knows this formulae you will be in a position to attempt the numerical first is synchronous speed do remember the unit of speed is revolutions per minute it is synchronous speed 120 f upon p p will be number of poles f will be the frequency and value of p and f will be given in the question then rotor speed is related to synchronous speed as rotor speed is nr nr is 1 minus s into ns s is the slip which will be again given in the question if rotor speed is need to be calculated then slip speed is given by ns minus nr this is minus sign ns minor minus nr then rotor output is pm stick to these notations don't get confused if you use this notation there won't be any confusion pm is rotor output power so it is p out plus p w f l now what is this p is power w is loss in the last unit also i told you w notation used is used to represent a loss so it is frictional loss and windage loss combination of all types of loss there are two major losses uh one is frictional and another is windage loss so it is p w f l l stands for loss then rotor copper loss is given by p r c u is p m into s upon 1 minus s s is the slip then input to the power is denoted by p2 uh, because p m is used for some other notation p is again used for some other notation so this notation is p2 which is p m plus p r c u p m you will be getting from this uh, formula then uh input to the starter is output of starter plus starter losses that is the input power to the starter and last one formula which i haven't uh, written efficiency it is calculated in percentage which is output power upon input power into 100% everyone is aware of this formula so these are the few things related to uh, the induction motor but do watch that video of induction motor to get an insight idea of all these things and this is the list of formulae you need to prepare you need to memorize now the last unit is actually very simple you need so you should not skip any part as far as last unit is concerned mainly it consists of bldc brushless dc motors then uh, uh, different types of stepper motors so principle of working of stepper motor you should prepare uh then uh, block diagram of electric vehicles microcontrollers used in electric vehicles then types of batteries and so on but that is a pretty easy unit compared to the other unit so dear students that's it for today's session so prepare this subject according to this video as well as uh, by referring previous videos uh, don't get confused so uh, thanks for watching this video all the best to everyone thank you very much